Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm going to take a look at the latest beta release of Orca Slicer version 2.3. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, an awesome prototyping service. I want to thank them for their sponsorship for this video. Recently, Orca Slicer has released beta version 2.3, and it's packed with some new features and lots of other great information. And I thought I'd spend a little time today taking a look at what's going to be in the upcoming versions and also some features that are available right now. So to get started, I just want to point out one of these cool things that Work Slicer has just been won the award for software of the year from the printing publication 3D Printing Industry. And so that's pretty good for them, it raises their profile. And again, that's something really awesome that they're receiving this, these awards as well as the uh, notoriety associated with doing an awesome job. Again, Orca Slicer it remains my favorite slicer and my slicer of choice. Some of the other things they have going on is right now Orca Slicer has a new website. And so you can go there. I've browsed the website. I like this a little bit better than trying to browse things through GitHub. They do have a features page and this goes to the documentation. Now the documentation is still the GitHub wiki, but this for novice users and people not familiar with GitHub is probably a little bit easier way to navigate and find information you're looking for. Another new feature is actually outside of Orca Slicer, but if you use printables, you can now choose the option to open in Orca Slicer. So if I take a look at printables and I'm looking at Banshee, if I scroll down, under the model files, there's the slice option. By default, it's open in Prusa Slicer, but if I click the drop down arrow, there's now open in Orca Slicer. So I'm going to click that and let's just make sure this works correctly. And as you can see, I'm printing some print and play stuff. It did, in fact, open my Benchy in Orca Slicer. So that's pretty cool. Just one less step I have to do whenever I'm trying to open a model and print. And so that's something I like, and that's something I'm really appreciative of printables adding to their site. Now, let's take a look at the features that are actually going to be in the new version of Work Slicer. In reviewing the release notes, one of the really cool features that's going to be in the new release is a global filament library. Basically, it's a rework of how profiles work in Worka Slicer, you can now share filament profiles between printers. Let's take a quick look at that inside the beta. So I've opened up the beta software on my machine, and to access the new filament profiles, and to basically leverage that global filament settings, I just go to my filament, and then if I take a look at dependencies, I can actually sit here and check all, which means this filament profile will be available to all my various printers. But I can also click and set specific machine profiles that this filament is available for. Now, this is particularly important for me because in the past, I've had multiple Ender 3 S1 pluses that I had basically different pr printer profiles because I was trying different things on the different printers, but I always wanted to use the same filament across printers. So I'm now able to do that. And this again, makes it easier for me to set up a filament profile and then share it between those different printers. Now it looks like I can also set these filament profiles to be available depending on my process settings. So again, I have this process profile set up for this printer. You can see it here. I can then make it where this filament is available to different profiles that I have set up. 
So again, a pretty cool feature, and it's going to be handy for me in the future as I'm trying to share settings or use settings across the board. I really like to set up a filament once and then sort of just tweak settings in between printers. In a lot of cases, I don't tweak anything. I use the same settings almost across the board, particularly if it's the same machine or the same extruder. So again, a handy new feature to try. So let's take a look at the next new feature, fuzzy skins. There's the new introduction of various fuzzy skin styles. I've never really used fuzzy skins, but I'm noticing the reason they're talking about them is the idea of hiding artifacts. And that would be hiding seams and other things. I think if you had a printer that didn't do a particularly good job with surface finish, trying fuzzy skins may be a way to address that and sort of hide those imperfections. Now, if we look at the features in Orca Spicer, let me switch over. I've loaded the bust of my head. I did this 3D scan probably two years ago. You can see there's some imperfections because my head does not have a flat part like back here. But I use this for a white elephant Christmas gift. And let me just say the person that won the bust of my head was thrilled. Right now, if I slice this as is, you can see the finish, and it looks like the seam is going up right here through the middle of my face. So let's go over here, and it's under Other. I'm going to check on Contour and Hold, and that gives me various fuzzy skin types. So Classic, if I slice that, again, you can see what it does, it generates uh, surface artifacts that again, hide imperfections. I don't particularly like the look of that one. So there's Perlin. Get different look. Billow. And I, I, like I said, all these are sort of interesting what they do. And then lastly, the War Nolly. As you can see, this does a interesting job and makes the model look pretty interesting and different. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, an awesome PCB prototyping service. One of their great features is their instant quote, where you can set the specifications of your PCB board. You can upload a Gerber file and then receive an instant quote. Once you place your order, you then can take a look at their transparency window to take a look at the production status. Under your account, you click production status. With this production transparency, you'll be able to see what the status of your order is and what's actually going on. So again, I wanna thank PCBWay for their sponsorship. The developers have added a new infill pattern that's 2D lattice, and this is optimized for very lightweight prints, particularly aircraft structures. So if I was printing a wing for an aircraft for a UAV, this would actually be a very good choice. And this would allow me to create something that was extremely lightweight, but does have some strength with that infill. Neat features, I thought, was this extrusion rate smoothing improvement, and then the exposing the shell interface. And that's really ideal if you're printing signs or text like on screen where it's two different colors, so you can look at it. Now, and there's lots of different changes and enhancements when it comes to bridges and how you set up and print those bridges. So again, that's excellent. Now, one of the other last interesting things that I think is really important, particularly because I use a Creality K2 with the filament system, they've added some code to help with the estimation of how much filament is being used when you do a purge. Right now, and I guess I didn't realize this, the used filaments when you're purging is not really calculated well and that's calculated externally from the slicer itself. 
But now with the newest version, they've integrated those purge estimates into the slicer and these are much more accurate. So if you set this up and turn it on, and basically by turning it on, you need to add in your change filament G code, a couple lines of code. It'll then have your extrusion calculations for that purge calculated. And in reading the comments, it seems like this has done a pretty good job and it's given very reasonable and accurate measurements of how much filaments being used via purge. So again, very interesting features. Now, as a last thing, I just want to point out that this is beta software. And if you're using beta software, you're using at your own risk. The other thing you should be aware of is if you're using the beta software, help the developers out by going to GitHub and if you have an issue, post that in the issue section and make sure to include what version you're using of Orca Slice or what operating system and various specifications so the developers can try to identify and then address the bug you found. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day.